everyone. Uh, tonight is our special annual meeting where we elect our president and vice president of the board for the upcoming uh, school year, or for the upcoming election year, I guess. I'm honored to do that. So I'll be presiding over the meeting here initially uh, while we get to that point. So I would like to call that there are recognized there's a quorum uh, present this evening. And we are ready for our pledge. Our young man this evening is Evan Mallow. And he's going to come up and offer our pledge. And we'll probably have a few questions for you. I understand you're a third grader from Lincolnshire Elementary. Yes. So if you'll just give a second to stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Evan, do you have some special guests with you tonight that you want to introduce? My mom, my dad, my assistant principal, my principal, and my teacher. You got the whole gang. Good. Yeah. Very good. Anybody else you want to recognize? Maybe somebody up this way? <laughs> my grandma. Your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> right. Members, I'm sure you have questions for, for Evan. Evan, what do you like best about school? When we do math and reading. Math and reading, two very important subjects. I just want to know, does your grandmother let you get away with more than your parents do? Not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, who's the best at wee bowling? You. Oh, really? <laughs> what do you like to do when you're not in school? Play with Legos and read. And read? Read. Any, anything else? Places you like to go? Battlefields. Battlefields. Oh, wow. Who's got it all in here? History, reading, math? Yeah. Yeah. Who's your favorite authors? Lauren Tasha is one of them. Oh, very good. Wonderful. And you like presidential history, too, don't you? Yes. Who's your favorite president? It's hard. <laughs> it's, I'd say... Mark, George Washington. Uh, good choice. Okay, anything else for Evan? Tell me tonight, lead us to the pledge. Okay, at this time I'll approve a motion to approve the agenda as written. Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. We moved in second for approval of the agenda. All those in favor? 7-0, and the student member concurs. And approval of minutes for closed session of November 19th and business meeting of November 19th. Dr. Michael, I move, I move for the approval of the closed session minutes dated November 17th, 2019. November 17th or 19th? I, I said the 17th. I meant to say the 19th. Okay. You're done well. Uh, I, I might have the wrong date of mine. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Mrs. Fisher, second the motion. All those in favor? Okay. And for business meeting? 7 0 was the vote. And I also move for the approval of the business meeting um, dated November 19th, 2019. For the business meeting of the 19th, all those in favor, raise your hands. 7 0, oh, and the, member, the student member concurs as well. Okay. At this time, I'll entertain uh, nominations for the position of president of the board for the coming year. Dr. Michael, I move to approve the nomination and appointment of Melissa Williams to be the president of the Washington County Board of Education. Is there a second? Second. Are there other nominations? All those in favor of Melissa Williams for president for the upcoming year, please raise your hand. 7 0. The board member concur, or the student member concurs for nominations for vice president. Dr. Michael, I um, nominate 
for Vice President of the Washington County Board of Education, Stan Stauffer. Are there other nominations for Vice President? Seeing none, we'll proceed with the vote. All those in favor of Mr. Stauffer for Vice President? Okay, 7 0, and the student member concurs. President Williams, I think I can turn the meeting back over to you now. Thank you very much, Dr. Michael. Okay, at this time uh, on our agenda, it shows that we have the superintendent's report. So, Dr. Michael, I'm going to turn it right back to you. Okay, well, tonight we're going to start with recognizing our uh, athletes from the winter, or excuse me, from the fall uh, sporting events. Uh, had the opportunity to attend a number of our events this year. We had a number of very, very competitive teams. I think. Uh, Smithburg and Clear Spring were head to head in soccer and I had the opportunity to watch in a competitive game and head to head in volleyball and some regional activity. I had the opportunity to watch that and some other things. But tonight we're going to recognize uh, volleyball state champions as well as cross country state champions and individual champions. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Michael. And uh, Eric, when you're ready, let us know and we'll have the board come down front. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Michael. So tonight we are, as Dr. Michael said, we're going to introduce uh, and recognize our state champions. Um, this past Saturday concluded the fall um, athletic season for the state of Maryland with the final state championship football um, game. We were very successful in Washington County this year. A um, couple changes. We had, instead of uh, regional champions, we had two regional champions. Uh, the state made these changes. Um, we had state quarterfinals, so there was another level to state championships this year. We also had more teams with football because we played a nine-game schedule. Um, happy to say out of seven football teams this year, we had four of our county schools advance to the playoffs, which was the first time. Ultimately culminating with our teams that we're going to recognize tonight and some individuals. We had 1A state champions, which was Smithsburg High School this year in volleyball. We had two individual champions in 1A cross country. Uh, one from Williamsport, young man, and a young lady from Smithsburg. And then we had Williamsport boys cross country team that was 1A champions. So tonight we're going to meet the members and recognize the individual members of each of these teams. Dr. Michael. As I said, our Smithsburg, we're very successful in Washington County and cross, with volleyball and cross country. It seems like every year we're recognizing these uh, two sports and with state championships. Um, Smithsburg, after a year's absence, was back this year, winning their 14th title. Um, for those who don't follow volleyball or don't, don't know, we now rank in Washington County. 14 makes them number two on the list of total wins. We have the top two of Washington County of state champions. So again, this is uh, how many, Rachel, out of the last 10 years? Eight or nine? 11. OK, nine of 11. That's a pretty good feat for this school. So with that, we're going to introduce our team tonight. Um, they're in numerical order. Haley Daniels. Addie McCracken. Ella, Ella, Ella Ravada, sorry. Skylar Radiker. Kylie Snyder. Sydney Hammond. Becky Carroll. Savannah Parker, Morgan Domenico, Savannah. 
Elizabeth Lund. Taylor Golden. Morgan Domenico. Ashley Eichelberger. Rachel Bakedel. Rose Powell. Domenico, <laughs> James Domenico, as I said, this is the 14th state title for Smithsburg Volleyball, placing him second in Maryland with the all-time titles. With this championship, Rachel Bakedel, the head coach, that makes her Gives her her ninth championship, which now puts her at the top of coaches for volleyball for the state of Maryland. Dr. Michael and members of the board, we talk about uh, our students being student athletes at the high, at our level, um, students first, and we like to recognize the academic of these students. Uh, this team had a team GPA of 3.85. Congratulations. Okay, next up, we're going to introduce our individual champions. We had two individual champions at the 1A cross country meet this year. Uh, for the girls, we have Daly Yonker from Smithsburg High School. <laughs> Daly had a winning time of 20 minutes and 26 seconds. And believe it or not, this is Daly's first year running cross country. And if you saw the paper today, she was first team. So uh, congratulations. And then on the boys' side, we also had an individual champion. So we swept, Washington County swept the 1A um, cross country. Uh, for Williamsport High School, we have Zane Iggy Chalker. Iggy, as he goes by, finished the race in 16 minutes flat. And if we watch, if we follow cross country this year, Iggy pretty much dominated the local scene, and he did this, the state meet as well, winning by just three seconds shy of one minute ahead of the second place person. The coaches, come up. So 
with us tonight, we have Ray Shriver, who is the Smithsburg head coach, and then we have assistant coaches from Williamsport High School. And last tonight, we have uh, the 1A Boys Cross Country Championship team from Williamsport High School. First up, we have Tucker Bubaz. <laughs> Iggy Chalker. <laughs> Gabe Condor. Nathan Heil. Alex Huffer. Griffin Nip. Chris Mackley. AJ Miller, Ariane Shaw, and Sid Shaw. Assistant Coach Adam Lowe, and Assistant Coach Kerry Johnson McClure. <laughs> Matt Shriver is the head coach is out of the country, so couldn't be here tonight. Um, before we bring the team back up, a neat kind of tidbit this year. Um, Ray was up. Ray Shriver, the head coach of Smithsburg. Ray, I, I don't know if this has ever been done. Ray, the Smithsburg boys finished second. Williamsport first. Ray's son, Matt, is the head coach of Williamsport. So we have father and son finished first and second in the state. That's just pretty, pretty good. And again, Dr. Michael, members of the board, this team had a team GPA or has a team GPA at 3.58. Congratulations.
settle. We should have help on the way here. We should have you make a speech now. Yeah. Your parents are <laughs> Directors and principals were here. Okay, hmm. hey, Mrs. Williams, I'll have further comments a little later in the program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael. This is the time when we have public comment, and I have no one who has signed up in advance. Is there anyone out there who would like to? Come take advantage of public comment. Yes, ma'am. Come up to the table, please, okay. if you would. Tell us your name and your address. Um, I'd like to read something to you from Policy KD, which uh, addresses public comment. Each person wishing to address the Board of Education is encouraged but not required to sign up prior to the meeting and may address any topic concerning Washington County Schools except personnel or student matters which clearly identify an individual or individuals. Each speaker may speak for up to five minutes. And Mr. Bickford is our timer, so he'll give you a yellow sign. Uh, <laughs> I can do it. That just means you have 30 seconds left and then that means Okay. okay. So would you introduce yourself, please? Yes. Hi. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Neff, and I attended the last uh, listening session in October with the superintendent, Dr. Boyd Michael, back on October the 15th. Um, at that time, I expressed my concern with the number of students in my daughter's kindergarten class at Rockland Woods. Currently, there are 26 students in her class. The main focus on that meeting was the decline in enrollment of Hancock and Clear Springs schools. He seemed to um, reassure us that none of, the, of those schools would close and there are no plans in the works to, to close any other school. Why all of a sudden is the Board of Ed going to close the early childhood program at Funkstown Elementary? The school had renovations over this past summer. Thousands of dollars were spent. This is a waste of taxpayer dollars. According to the WCPS website, the max capacity is 200 students at Funkstown. If the board wants to excel at all the mandated state testing, they have to look at classroom size. There are so many children with emotional behavior learning problems. How is one teacher to focus on a child's specific needs if he or she is the only teacher in the classroom? With Funkstown closing, it's going to increase classroom size even though this school is for pre-K. Perhaps you guys can open the school for pre-K up to first grade. The beginning of the basic foundation for learning be begins in pre-K. Classroom size will probably always be a problem for the county. Things are not going to improve for Rockland Woods. Westfields are co continuing to expand. They are projected to build almost 400 additional homes. There are supposedly be townhomes and or apartments built beside Walmart. Rockland Woods enrollment back in October was 661. The max capacity is 750 students. If you do not want to reconsider redistricting some of the grades, then more staff will have to be hired to help out in the classrooms. The schools can't always depend on interns and or volunteers. These applicants don't need to have a teaching degree. They can be trained for the position with a strict hiring process. At this time, we'll have board member comments. Anyone has a comment they would like to make with regard to public comment? I don't, I don't need to respond directly. I imagine Dr. Michael May, um, but just thank you for, for coming and speaking. I know it's not easy to do. No, it's <laughs> just it's just been weighing heavy on my heart. Absolutely. And everything. It's, it's good to hear from the public. Yeah, about I mean, I have today. three girls, and my oldest is in fourth, and it's just the pressure of everything, math facts, just 
it's just horrendous. And just I see all these reports, your last recent um, progress reports that came out. And, you know, Rockland did okay. They wasn't like the top rated school, but it's just going to continue. We're having so many homes built, so many people coming into the county. It's just it's getting really crazy and nerve like eye opening for me because mm -hmm. of all the other children, especially with a lot of the kids with emotional and behavior problems. Yeah. And that takes a lot of time, distraction from the teacher away from a child that really needs help, whereas somebody another child's acting out. But Thank you again. Mm -hmm. Okay, at this time, we'll move on. We have no old business this evening, so we'll move right ahead to new business. Our first item of new business is the consent agenda. Mr. Bakedell. Good evening, President Williams, board members, Dr. Michael. Tonight I have two items for review. The Purchasing Review Committee did review these items and they are being recommended for approval. Uh, and staff is available if you have any additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Bakedell. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move to approve the awards, renewals, and notice of sale for mechanical and refrigeration maintenance for the Food and Nutrition Services Department to MTS Equipment Mechanical at 35928 and Thai Construction Company, Inc. Refrigeration at $60,000 for a total cost of $95,928 plus the cost of parts and refrigerant. Disposition of up to 3,000 iPads per board policy DN. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Any questions for Mr. Bakedell or any discussion? about the iPad sales. When we sell, do, we, do you have any idea how much we are expected to bring in with that? So we reach out to companies who kind of specialize in buying obsolete devices. Um, those, the, there's a process they go through and they're graded uh, basically from an A to an F. An F would be something that probably doesn't turn on. A would be kind of like new. Mm -hmm. Most of ours probably fall in the B and C category. Um, the cost is probably somewhere between $30 and $40 for a B and C, 50 for an A, down to maybe five for, for a, um, uh, an F, you know, one that is basically doesn't function. It just would be used for parts if, if there was any salvageable parts. Got it. Do we ever make them available for, for students to purchase first? Or? Uh, that is not something that we have done in the past. Um, I think the challenge for us when we've looked in that before, we have to wipe the devices clean so all the software is removed and everything like that. To take a $30 or $40 device and to purchase software and add back to the device, especially those that are outdated, so yeah, you wouldn't be able to add yeah. current software to it. You'd have to be looking for old software to add to it, even to operate the system. It just, I think we'd be causing more trouble for our students and parents than it'd be worth. They'd be coming back to us saying, why didn't yeah. you sell me this device I it can't do anything work. with? Right, yeah. that makes and, sense. Yeah. Um, otherwise, we'd gladly give them away or, or do something like that, but it's not that type of thing. Most of these would probably be salvaged for parts, even ones that don't turn on. A lot of our um, desktop computers and things like that, you know, we watch the scrap value and we have a company that, that, that uh, you know, gleans what they can glean out of them for scrap, is what most of them will go for. Yeah, thank you. Sure. These are. Uh, two, threes, and fours. Two, I threes, think. and fours. So yeah, two, they're all uh, nothing that really Apple currently updates. You know, all the OS systems are kind of out of date, and and there's <laughs> as probably a lot of people know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mr. Bickford's motion is to approve this evening's consent agenda as read. All those in favor? Okay, we have seven affirmative votes and the student member concurs and motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Bankville. Thank you. And at this time, we'll have Mr. Trotta come forward for the first reading of proposed changes to policy KCE school volunteers.
Good evening. The policy committee conducted a review of policy KCE, and they took the following action. First, a purpose clause was added to the policy along with a, a definition of the term volunteer. And you should uh, also, uh, as you review your draft, uh, see that the policy statement section in the policy was reorganized. The policy committee is requesting the Board of Education's approval of the first reading of the proposed changes to policy KCE. And I'm glad to respond to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trotta. Is there a motion? Yes, Madam President. I move to approve the first reading of proposed changes to policy KCE entitled School Volunteers. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Ridenow. Any questions for Mr. Trotta or any discussion? Mrs. Fisher. Just a comment. Um, our volunteers are very much appreciated and we thank them for their time and service. Uh, the changes that the committee made to the policy were done for clarification and, of course, for the safety of our students and staff. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, the vote is on Mrs. Fisher's motion to approve the first reading of proposed changes to policy KCE entitled School Volunteers. All those in favor? We have seven affirmative votes, and the student member concurs. The motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Trotter. And next on the agenda, we have Dr. Pugh with the 2020-2021 Middle and High School Program of Studies. Good evening. Good evening. Each year around this time of year, we come before you to seek approval um, of all of the courses that will be available for the following year's ninth, ninth grade and sixth grade students. Important information is communicated through a booklet that's handed out and distributed to parents on transition nights when a student moves from elementary to middle and from middle to high. Um, this is intended to give parents and families and students all of the information they need for the time that they will be at that level. This year, um, all of the course descriptions have been revised. They've been revised to align with the state of Maryland's master course catalog, and they have a, a specific code so that the state can gather information about who's taking what courses and who is completing them. There's also all of the courses that have been either added or inactivated in the 2021 program of studies are intended to be in effect for students who are entering ninth grade next year and entering sixth grade. So inactivated middle school courses, the first is a magnet grade eight algebra and that's inactivated because all of our magnet students are now on a sequence where they take algebra in grade seven and they'll be moving to geometry in grade eight. Life skills was too generic of a description for what the students were actually doing. So those courses have actually been um, re redefined to include English, math, science, and social studies at each grade level. And you'll see we've aligned with the high school. We have the essentials of English, essentials of uh, mathematics, essentials of science, and social studies. These are for students specifically determined eligible by their IEP team to receive instruction based on alternative um, academic standards. These standards are aligned with the Maryland College and Career Ready standards. However, they do not cover the breadth and depth of the general education curriculum. New high school courses available. Robotics is an exciting addition for this next year coming up. We're hoping to be able to connect it to a CTE completer in the future. And also an additional course for our English learners who need consistent and continued support beyond their uh, year four. We have four courses uh, built in, but if they need an additional one, uh, we, we had to make another course available. And then consistent with each year, Advanced Placement College Board changes the names of their courses. So these are not necessarily new courses. Um, they are courses that have been broken out and specifically called AP um, 2D and 3D Art and Design, and then AP Art History and Drawing. Also, not to be outdone, International Baccalaureate has done the same with their mathematics sequence. Um, 
HL is, stands for higher level, so they've added, we've added an IB physics higher level because our students are getting to, to be able to sequence up to the highest level offered in physics. And then the IB mathematics standard levels and higher level courses have been revised um, to include statistics. IB sports exercise and health science has been moved into uh, science. It was previously taught in physical education, but it is more of a science-based course. For our career in technology education, um, this was a significant change um, with our courses offered at the technical high school. They moved from two courses, which were year-long courses, level one and level two, you may have heard in the past, to break them out into four course sequences so that students can actually earn credit for getting a completer, which means completing the, or a concentrator, completing the third course, or a completer completing the fourth course. So each, um, each of the programs offered were changed to reflect uh, the sequences as required by MSDE. And with that, I'll <coughs> happily answer any questions, but we're seeking your approval for both the middle and high school programs of study. Thank you, Dr. Pugh. Dr. Pugh. Yes? I was just curious, uh, where's art history going to be offered? It's an option. Schools can offer it. I think right now ClearSpring offers. Okay. That would be... Barbara Ingram can also offer. The year, uh, yeah, under, yeah, under, yeah, yeah, under. Okay. Right. Anyone else have a question? I have one for you, Dr. Pugh. <clears throat> the AVID programs yes. that we have, we have AVID at North Eggerstown High School, South Eggerstown High School, and Smithsburg. And I would think that we have students who could benefit from such a program. What would it take for us to have that in the other high schools? It's available for all of the high schools to select into, but you have to commit to the training. Uh -huh. You also have to commit to the dedicated teacher um, and offering the tutorials. It, it's a bit costly, but it is well worth it for the students who, who need that additional support. But am I right that there would be students in, in our other high schools that would fall into that category of Absolutely. an avid student? Okay. It was offered at Williamsport, but they don't have it anymore. Why? Correct. Often that was an, a choice of the school, um, whether or not they had interest by the students, whether or not they had a qualified ta staff, whether or not they had um, interest in continuing the training. So it's a school choice program based on the needs of the school, and they have to determine among all their needs what their priorities are. It's, it's one structured way of meeting at-risk students or students for first-time college and things. It's not the only way. Right. So I think some schools have looked at what how they best believe they can meet their students. It's a substantial investment in time, a commitment in, um, to commit to what AVID wants. Actually, we had the AVID trainer here this week was meeting with some of the AVID coaches. I think we were just here yesterday evening. Yes, it's monitored, heavily monitored, and you are accountable. Yeah, because there's another one, what, Upward Bound? That's something that's talking like four yep. or five schools, something like that. I, I did. Know. I just wanted to say, could you briefly explain AVID to people that don't know what we're talking about? I know lots of times so I'm watching something and people are talking about a program or saying something, I, I just like... Sure. Um, it's actually a, an acronym for Advancement Via Individual Determination. And students are identified early on in the middle school years often uh, as first-time college goers. So they're students who do not have families who understand navigating financial finances, decisions about college, decisions about trade school. Um, and so it's a very structured support that gives them some of those things that you would give, find in a family that had gone to college, note-taking skills, tutorials, study habits, um, also exposure to visits to colleges. Thank you. Hmm? Any other questions for Dr. Pugh? And just once again, IB is only offered at Northern Middle and North, but students from other schools can apply to go and join the program? That's correct. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so is there a motion for approval? President Williams, I move for the approval of the 2020-2021 middle and high schools program of studies. 
Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Gessner. Any discussion? All those in favor of approval of the 2020-2021 Middle and High School Program of Studies, raise your hand. Okay, we have seven affirmative votes. Student member concurs. Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Beer. Thank you. And at this time, we'll have the second half of the superintendent's Can report. The report, uh, the state's finally released the MESA, um, Maryland Integrated Science Assessment data. And Maureen is uh, away on a much needed trip at this point, a well deserved trip, I'll say. And Dr. Q and uh, our science supervisor for secondary are going to fill in. That's right. Joining me is Jeff Longenberger, our secondary science supervisor, sometimes high school, sometimes middle school, always both. Um, we have data and information for you regarding the 2018-19 Maryland Integrated Assessment. Our students take an assessment which includes cumulative science content um, for the elementary in grade five and then for the middle school in grade eight. In this graph, you'll see the percent of students along the vertical axis and the color coding for the four proficiency levels of partially met, approached, met, or exceeded along the bottom. On the left, we have grade five results from 2018 where 30.7% of students met or exceeded expectations. And on the right, you'll notice our 2019 resi results are very similar with 30.6% of students meeting or exceeding expectations. And this is in the elementary. In eighth grade, you'll notice on the left that 38.4% of the students met or exceeded performance expectations in 2018 and in the right, on the right, in 2019, 42.6% of students met or exceeded the Maryland Integrated Science Assessment Standards. In this chart, you'll notice that while remaining relatively flat in grade five, our state ranking improved from a tie for 15th up to 14th, and in grade eight, our ranking improved from 14th in 2018 to 11th in the state in 2018-19. Both grades improved in the ranking. And Mr. Longenberger will share with you some of the work that has been done to support teachers and students in preparing for this new assessment. Good evening, everybody. So uh, the Maryland Integrated Science Assessment, or MISA, is assessing the next generation science standards. And that's a progression of life science, physical science, and earth and space science that's taught in combination. When it comes time for students to demonstrate their understanding of NGSS, uh, they are actually assessed on, in an integrated fashion uh, where they would need to apply a combination of disciplines and practices in order to demonstrate their understanding. Uh, this differs from previous assessments where it would be focused on just a single content. Okay. So in order to do this, uh, one thing that we've done in order to support teachers and students in science is to continuously enrich the WCPS essential curriculum. This enrichment consists of hands-on learning opportunities uh, where students can extend their experience into more application. Uh, furthermore, science investigations. Our curriculum in, and instruction promotes the use of phenomena in the classroom. Over the course of instruction, students investigate the phenomena and, and, apply, and actually apply their learning to reach a conclusion to the, situ, uh, to the phenomena that's being investigated using the content that they've learned. Um, active reading and writing. This is a reoccurring opportunity that students have to read and annotate text articles uh, that are consistently built into the science classrooms. This process of active reading allows students to extract meaning and make sense of articles before communicating understanding. The information is extracted from the text and often used as evidence to support claims and evaluated through discourse. Cornerstone tasks provide teachers with the understanding on how uh, students are able to apply content knowledge and practice to uh, what they have learned to new situations. The design of these tasks were purposefully modeled and constructed off of MISA to provide students the experience in taking integrated assessments. And when considering aligned resources and materials, elementary science incorporates resources from National Geographic and custom built kits that are aligned to current curricular outcomes. Middle school science uses Amplify, the Amplify Science platform to support the learning in the classroom. 
furthermore, uh, professional learning is actually focused at all grade levels, and that is because of the integrated nature of our curriculum. So we don't want to just target one, uh, one specific grade area since the assessment and our standards cover all in an integrated fashion. Uh, this often looks like uh, collaborative planning, literacy development, formative assessments, reviewing student work samples, book studies, and ongoing training on the Amplify platform. The classroom-focused improvement process uh, focuses on uh, the standards and the teaching practices which are discussed with content teams to develop a means of implementing, assessing, and refining student learning. Data reports are provided uh, annually through MISA, uh, cornerstone tasks for each of our grade levels, and then we have Amplify, which provides uh, two times a month, so it gives us progress monitoring on that level as well. Uh, action planning is based on trends in the data from previous MISA reporting and continuing, continuous progress monitoring throughout the school's SIP plans. Uh, based upon the outcome of the data, supports can be directed to schools and what they need. And then finally, targeted interventions are possible as a result of specific needs that are identified in the data. At this time, if you have any questions about MISA, it's a new assessment, um, we're happy to respond. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, the integrated science uh, exam for high school isn't going to count to like 2021 or something like that, this type of thing. What's the history on when this test was devised and field tested for the fifth and eighth grade? So you're asking um, the history of the development of the MISA mm -hmm. and well, the stages you know, that it's gone through? I've yeah. been around so long. We keep coming up with tests, then we get rid of them, right. this type of thing. I mean. Right. So with the development of NGSS, uh, Maryland looked to create an assessment to go along with it. Um, so field testing took place, I believe it was about two years ago. And then from there, we've been slowly building up how it's being used in field test or um, standards alignment and ensuring that uh, the test is equitable for our students. And then now we're getting to the point where we're starting to see full implementation. This is actually the first year that it's <coughs> counted in the STARS reports. So it's the first time it's actually been counted sense. Is it really a valid test? I mean, reliable and everything? I mean. So when we look at what MISA is actually assessing, it's uh, not focused on a single content. It's more focusing on how scientists think and act and respond to data that's given to them. So the structure of the MISA itself lends itself to more what a scientist would be doing instead of just memorization and, and right. producing facts to answer a question. So it is valid and reliable, but it is also cumulative. So think three years of learning across different contents, which is why we've restructured our high school courses so that students actually had a physical science, a life science, and a um, earth and space science. So this test drives our instruction. Absolutely. Next gen science standards, though, are the in my opinion, probably one of the better sets of standards because they have done the integration across using English and math. So it, think about how life is. We don't just go out and do English or just go out and do math. These are actual practical problems and students are engaged in solving them using English and math to communicate the results, to, to study it. So it's, to me, it can be a, if it's done properly, it can be a really linchpin in our students who wrote this test? Did who we wrote one it? Of the big publishing companies <laughs> to do it, like we used to do the high school assessment yeah. in government stuff. Right. So um, item writing takes place. Um, actually, they get stakeholders from local uh, educational agencies that would go and uh, write the items, where they would then be later reviewed, field tested, to make sure that they are t assessing what we expect them to assess. So it's actually a, a collaborative effort. Anyone else? Challenge with this, it, fall, it appears that it falls to fifth grade and eighth grade for the testing requirements. That happens to be where, when it's tested. It really is that accumulation of, of knowledge through elementary through middle school that's actually to be tested. Um, so we've really worked hard to try to embed this throughout our curriculum. So uh, I think you'll see scores improve here in the near future uh, fairly rapidly. I saw a science lesson today in pre-K. They were working on solids, gases, and liquids. Uh, in pre-K, I was actually surprised. I mean, it wasn't anything over the top. It was that simple. 
but it was just like the experience of what the solid gases and liquids are. Um, I don't know if it had anything related to what, where they're heading with BESA or not, but it was a good science lesson. I have a question. Um, looking at your, your um, graphs, the number of students in the approached, I guess that's approaching meeting the standard, is that what that, okay. And that's a pretty sizable number of students. And you mentioned interventions. Now as, a, as someone who comes from an elementary school background, I'm familiar with reading and math interventions. Could you give us some examples of what kind of interventions are offered to students to help them be successful on this particular test, given that it is cumulative and, and integrated? So um, when I consider the interventions that are possible right now, um, within our uh, the primary resource that I mentioned, the Amplify platform, um, there are formative assessments built into it that give teachers very vital data along the way. Not to mention there's a piece that is exactly midway through the process, learning process, which is called the critical juncture. Um, this allows uh, teachers to really start to differentiate their resources, so the scaffolds that can be built in, and actually um, Amplify recommends what scaffolds to apply at that point. So it's going to be a bit of that, and then also we're also, the, the um, professional development that we supply um, with Amplify actually focuses in on providing those differentiation opportunities and how to meet the needs of our learners a little bit better. Thank you. Yeah, and at the elementary level, it is not like uh, going into a scripted program. It really is because of the nature of the way that it's assessed. It's the scientific process, basically, mm -hmm. and so it can be assessed similarly with new content. So remediation where a student might struggle in identifying the solution, that's where you would focus them in the next set of content. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'd just like to bring up the STARS report since it did come out last week. The state uh, released that information. I was very pleased that still we were around 88% of our schools with a four and five star rating. There were two new significant portions added to the STAR rating. The MESA data that was just shared uh, for elementary was worth five points uh, in, uh, in elementary and three and a half points in middle school. Um, so obviously we have some work to do there to help improve in those areas. Then the survey data counted as 10 points for every school. Uh, so those were two new pieces. Um, obviously the progress we've made in particularly reading and growth we've made in math and reading and some of our all-time high records in both across the board in reading and even in math uh, position us well. And I'm very pleased and proud of our staff, the hard work that they've done, uh, even our ESP staff that have helped contribute to that as well as our Ministry of Staff. So I just want to take a second and congratulate the staff for all that work. I do want to make folks aware that uh, nominations are starting to be accepted for Teacher of the Year again. It's hard to believe, but we're already ready for nominations. I think they open up on January 3rd. And that's available on our website, wcpsmarylandmd.com, and people can start nominating folks for that. And board, I'd like to bring to you tonight three videos. We're going to show them right in a row, um, and then I might have some comments afterwards. The first one's going to be a two-minute drone video of Sharpsburg Elementary. If you looked on my Facebook page, you might have already seen this, but I think it's worth uh, watching. If you've already seen it, it'll be worth uh, the real good update of what's happening down in Sharpsburg as we kind of reach the halfway point of that project. Um, this week is the Hour of Code, which is computer science education. We have a lot of our teachers across the county, particularly our library media folks that are participating in this. I get the opportunity to see it throughout the year and just some really, really cool uh, gadgets and learning opportunities our students have. So we're just going to show a little snapshot of what's happening. Uh, Pre-K to 12 with the our well, particularly with our computer science education week, and then our reading apprenticeship program. I'm going to try to look for opportunities to bring snippets of, again, the great things that I get an opportunity to see out in the field, uh, to the board and to the public, uh, in some video clips. And I know we have Jody and Laura, and I think the teacher from South, the principal, a student, I think even from South, and others here today the, about the reader uh, apprenticeship program. And we'll talk a little bit about the expansion of that for just a second. So, Aaron, if we'd run the video at this point, that'd be great.
Coding is revolutionizing the world. In its basic form, coding is simply the language that is used to communicate with computers to tell them what to do. It incorporates principles of science, technology, engineering, and math, what is commonly referred to as STEM education. But it also enhances student abilities in creativity, collaboration, problem solving, and communication. Washington County students from pre-K to high school are learning coding and computational thinking skills, starting early to set them up for a successful career in the workforce in the future. At Rockland Woods Elementary, these pre-K students are learning the basics, using Code & Go robot mice to set their critter on a path they create. Students program directional commands to get the robotic rodents to their prize cheese. Pangborn kindergartners work in groups with two other coding characters, Botley and Aubie. Again, these students are programming single-step sequences to get between two points. If a mistake happens, these kids know how to debug their bots and start over. Second graders at Williamsport Elementary are pairing coding and literacy for a unique programming activity. The Ozabot is programmed through a series of colored blocks. These are the codes. Students will map out a series of codes to tell a story. For example, they can use the Nitro Boost code to describe a character running away quickly. Before each sequence, Ozabot has to be calibrated to clear his brain, as the teacher calls it. Students engage in computational thinking skills as they advance through the grades. At Springfield Middle, Girls Who Code is a first-of-a-kind program that encourages girls to enter the field of coding and computer science. WCPS has partnered with this organization for training and support for our educators and our students. The girls are using Apple's Swift Playgrounds programming language to build a virtual assistant similar to Alexa or Siri. In this lesson, funded through a grant from American Library Association, the boys are choosing an everyday hero from their own life and using scratch block coding to show their hero's personality and superpowers. Coding crosses many curriculum lines, folding in the obvious components of technology, math, and science, but including English, writing, and other literacy pieces, and much more. And our teachers are making it creative and collaborative. It's another way to prepare these students for success in education and in the workforce in the future. I just dislike books, like it, I didn't get entertained by them. I didn't want to do it because I really didn't enjoy reading. It was hard, like I used to just want to like to stay with picture books and like a bunch of words in it. In Mrs. Hambrick's science class, the lesson may be about force and motion. But the real science behind what students are learning begins with reading. These students are part of the Reading Apprenticeship, a concept created by West Ed. They put together a series of strategies that are um, used with students to help them comprehend um, text that they're reading. Now in its second year at South High, these freshmen in the Reading Apprenticeship have been putting those strategies to use since the beginning of this school year. Kids are taught that it's okay to have those conversations about what they're reading and it's okay if you don't understand every single word. The success after just one year astounded educators with 87 percent of students demonstrating growth in their reading some of them improving as much as three grade levels. I was kind of dying, but like read this one, I'm like, okay, so I read it and it just like kept me entertained to it. And so I just kept reading. These lessons go beyond English language arts with social studies, science, and even math teachers guiding students to use the strategy. The lab that I'm gonna do anyway, that's reading. How do you analyze it? The word problems that we do, you know, that's still reading because you have to approach those differently than you do like a fictional text or something like that. So it's still reading. It's just not what I typically thought of as reading. And the success at South High is transcending reading abilities. Teachers are seeing other positive changes in their students. What we're really doing in the classroom is building reading communities. So what we're seeing is that students are responding to text academically, but they're also creating reading communities that are beneficial once they leave the classroom. So they're talking about books more just for the enjoyment, or they're talking about problems they're seeing in books that you know can help them with the, the problems they see in their own lives. Now students are equipped to overcome challenges in the text, and they're reading in transformative ways. In middle school, we had to do a lot of reading, and I used to just sit there. Now I'm engaged. It changed my life, like, 
I feel more confident about reading. So in the short time that those videos have been created, uh, I was down in Sharpsburg today. The entire roof deck looks like it's on the building. I know they're kind of being hampered by weather, probably for the outside work right now. So great progress on that. And the opening shot of Sharpsburg, you probably don't even notice it, but where it looks up at the, new, at the old school and starts to come up, there's a kind of a bare spot where actually Sharpsburg Elementary was written on the wall. You can't even see it unless you're back mm -hmm. away from the street level. That's been taken down and already installed on in a new school since this video has been made. So that, that's uh, pretty cool, I think, at this point. Our students have been coding uh, across the county. I saw some great lessons several weeks ago uh, on some of these gadgets that we have. It's amazing what our kids can do already and that thought process that's gone through their head um, to make the robots move you know, left, right, so many steps forward. We have one device, and it was pictured there just briefly, but it almost looks like an iPad standing up, and the students are replicating. They have different shapes and different sizes of triangles and squares and rectangles and colors of those things, and they have to image or mirror what's up on this device, and this device recognizes when it's correct, almost taking like a picture of it, and um, it has different levels and things like that. I mean, it's, it's young children doing really high-level thinking type things. So. Really proud of all the efforts. I see Jonna French back in the audience. Her library media specialists have been champions uh, of driving forward our curriculum, particularly in in uh, all of the elementaries and middle of the, many of the middle schools. And we appreciate uh, her efforts. And the South High team, kind of that whole corner over here, besides uh, Jonna, uh, teachers are here, and I see some students or a student here, I believe. Uh, but they've been championing our reader apprenticeship program. Some notes that I have. Uh, just in the first couple months of school, 59% of our students are in reader apprenticeship. They're demonstrating growth. So beyond South High, this is at other schools as well. And 70% of our special ed students have already demonstrated some growth. And we've moved from just South High to 52 uh, teachers now trained on the uh, reading apprenticeship strategies that are used. So I'm sure any of them would love to jump up here and answer questions if you have any questions. And I mean that sincerely. They are very, very passionate. I uh, appreciate the support of the teachers across curriculum levels. Appreciate the support of our student that came out tonight uh, to see the debut there of the update. Yep. And uh, Principal uh, Wilcox, Dr. Wilcox being here as well. So if there's any questions, any of them will be glad to respond. It's good to see the stars of the video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate you being here tonight. The only other thing I had for this evening, uh, we are coming up on the winter break. Uh, it'll be from Monday, December 23rd through January 1st, Wednesday, January 1st, and students and staff will all return on January 2nd. We are here the rest of this week. We are here all of next week, so make sure you show up for that. I hope everybody enjoys time with family and friends, our students, as well as our staff. And I wish everybody happy holidays, and Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael. At this time, we have some personnel action that we need to um, address. Mr. Trotta. Thank you. I am requesting the Board of Education's uh, consideration and vote on decision in order 2019-004. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trotta. Is there a motion? I move to adopt decision and order 2019-004. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Is there a second? Thank you, Mrs. Murray. Any discussion or any questions for Mr. Trotta? Okay. All those in favor of adopting decision and order 2019-004. Okay, we have seven affirmative votes. Decision and order adopted. Thank you. I am requesting the Board of Education to consider and to vote on decision and order 2019-005. Thank you, Mr. Trotta. Is there a motion? Madam President, I move to adopt decision and order 2019-005. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. 
Any questions for Mr. Trotta? Any discussion? All those in favor of adoption of the decision and order 2019-005. We have seven affirmative votes. Decision and order adopted. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Dr. Bishop. Good evening, Mrs. Williams, Dr. Michael, and board members. As discussed earlier in closed session, we have several staff changes for your review. So at this time, I ask for your approval of today's personnel actions. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Is there a motion? Madam President, move to, to accept the personnel actions uh, dis discussed earlier today. Thank you, Mr. Rodner. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Bickford. Any questions for Dr. Bishop? Any discussion? Then we'll move to the vote on approval of today's personnel actions. Okay, we have seven affirmative votes. Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to reports to the board. Board member committee reports. Mr. Mackley, would you like to begin? All right, thank you. This is Murray. Curriculum and instruction met on Tuesday, November 26. Dr. Pugh gave us an overview of the um, updated middle and high school programs of study. And um, we don't have a date for our next meeting because of the reorganization of the committee. Thank you very much. Finance. Finance is scheduled for a meeting next Tuesday, the 17th at 8 a.m. Mr. Gessford, facilities? Yes, facilities met. Um, and we recently went down to the Sharpsburg Elementary School and uh, had a tour. Uh, thanks, uh, Christopher, was able to uh, attend that also. Um, we had a good time and uh, the, everything, the project looks wonderful. Uh, it was quite muddy when we got there. <laughs> and no one told us to bring our old shoes. <laughs> and we were walking to around. Too, that clay. Yeah. I still have it on my car, so <laughs> it's that clay. But um, it looks like it's uh, proceeding very nicely, and uh, we're all looking forward to seeing that progress even more uh, this spring. So. Thank you, Mr. Gasper. Mrs. Fisher, policy? Yes, policy committee met on November 26th. The main item of business at that time was to begin discussion of the new state required policy on equity. The committee members were assigned the task of writing um, the purpose section for the new policy and we will discuss those at the next meeting which is scheduled for December 17th, that's this coming Tuesday, <coughs> excuse me, at 9.15. Um, we'll consider um, submissions for the purpose and then continue discussion of the policy at that time. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. Mr. Ridenour? Yes, the HR committee <clears throat> met last or Tuesday the 26th um, looking at efforts to recruit new personnel for the upcoming years. We are not scheduled to meet this month. Thank you, Mr. Ridenour. Um, as part of our annual board reorganization and in accordance with our policy BDE, um, I'm announcing our standing committees for 2020 as finance, facilities, human resources, curriculum and instruction, and policy review and development. Colleagues, if you would please review the charges of each of those committees found in policy BDE and let me know which committees you would like uh, to serve on those that you prefer. Uh, each standing committee is limited to three members. In January, I'll present a slate of committee assignments and committee chairmen for the board's approval. Uh, so please let me know via email, if you would, which standing committees your preferences are, and I'd like this information no later than Tuesday, December 17th. Okay? Thank you. Uh, miscellaneous business, future agenda items. You should have a list of future agenda items coming up in January. We have an equity update and an update on the kindergarten readiness assessment. Uh, and Mrs. Kate will be here 
for a legislative briefing on um, the legislative session. So that's coming up in January. Move to board member comments. Mr. Ridener, would you like Nothing to begin? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Fisher? Yes, but everyone has a great and safe holiday coming up. <laughs> Mr. Gasper? Oh, I just want to say I had a good time down at uh, Bispa's uh, donator um, a banquet. Um, it was a really nice evening um, at, at the Maryland Theater, and it was a gorgeous venue. Um, a lot of great... Uh, entertainment by Bispa students and I really enjoyed it so thank you and have a Merry Christmas to everybody uh, I'll just ditto what uh, Mrs. Fisher and Mr. Gessford have already said All right. Mr. nothing for me I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday and um, see you next year Mr. Mackley I'm nothing nothing I'd like to wish um, my colleagues, superintendent, staff, and all teachers out there, parents and students, wish you the merriest of Christmases. Thank you, and we'll stand adjourned. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.